Thank you. Uh, Dr. Stanton Peel is the author of Addiction Proof Your Child, a realistic approach for preventing drug and alcohol and other dependencies. Um, and we will quickly get him ready to go. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you. I have a little different concern from some of the other speakers. Uh, I've written books like Addiction Proof Your Child and Seven Tools to Beat Addiction and Love and Addiction. My concern is how do you prevent addiction? And when I ask that question, I focus on something a little bit different. There's one key question I ask is, how does a young person learn to drink? Jim, where, where, how did you learn to drink? Uh, my father owned a tavern in Buffalo. My mother used to make mustard with beer. She let me taste it. How did that work for you? Fine, I only got a taste of it. So. There are really basically two answers to that question right now. That, that's one of the answers. I'll go into that. The question is alcohol good or bad? And I don't have time to throw that out to the audience. Of course, everybody in the audience would say, well, that depends, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, no study has found that regular moderate drinking depreciates men, men, mental functioning. Your chart said that it can be serious for people to binge drink and drink excessively under the age of 21. And that's a critical issue that we have to face right now. Um, I'm against the idea of total abstinence and restricting youthful drinking because it doesn't address the issue of how people will learn to drink when they eventually do drink. Uh, how many people in this room drink alcohol? I have? Could you raise your hand, please? So, it's certainly most of the members of the panel <laughs> and a lot of people in the audience of varying ages. Um, the other reason I'm against the total abstinence approach is because what has always been true is becoming increasingly true which is there are so many different options for addictive behavior. Uh, the fastest growing drug use in the United States is, of course, pharmaceutical drug use, illicit analysis. But the largest source for substance-based problems is alcohol. And so when I write a book like Addiction Proof Your Child, I address the question, how do you prevent young people from being addicted or becoming addicted and I do have a special concern for alcohol. Next slide, please. A famous study that was very much publicized in the United States. It pointed out that kids who were permissive about their kids drinking were twice as likely to binge drink. It found that kids who drank with their parents were one third as likely to binge drink. That's the Foley study. Do you know it, Jim? Uh, Take a look at it, would you? So that it doesn't exactly go against your results, of course. They are drinking when they're under 18, but they're drinking at home like you did with your parents. Now there's a concept there. And let me address one other thing that came up between John and Jim. There are three different measurements that we can be concerned about. The percentage of people that drink, the percentage of young people that drink, the amount that people drink, and the amount that people binge. Now I'm going to throw out some, a piece of data that's stunning. Jim, you, it's going to take you a long time to even think about it. There's an inverse correlation in the European cross-cultural research between the amount of alcohol consumed in a society and alcohol-related social problems and an inverse correlation between the amount of alcohol consumed and alcohol-related mortality. Did you know that? How could that possibly be? Anybody have a, anybody want to, lady there, you look very smart. How could that possibly be? You, yeah. You don't think it could possibly be? Well, there are some countries where, like France, although it's increasing in France, there are uh, other countries where most of the people drink moderately. Okay, we're getting in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Is there a good way to learn to drink? Next. We've already done this next. We've already done this with Jim. Next. <laughs> now, how do American kids learn to drink? And I don't think Jim would think that it was good for them to go 
out in the woods and drink a bunch of beer. Whenever they did learn how to do that, I think Jim, they want to come reflection with me. It's good for them never to have drunk in high school to go to college and to drink at a fraternity party or to go into the service. That would not be, but it's not the way you learn to drink. Next. We know the answer to this question. Jim has pointed out, and John have both pointed out, that actually America, among young adolescent drinking, is not high at all. <coughs> However, the societies where there is less binge drinking, Greece, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Cyprus, have the lowest drinking ages. The lowest drinking ages. How does that work? How do they have the least drunkenness if they have lowest drinking ages? Do you have an idea? Nobody has any ideas. This is a college campus. I can't get an answer except for the battle. You've got to work with me. What do you have an idea? You. You. Next. 